Alright, welcome back to this series, which I guess I still somehow haven't been able to, uh, really clear things up on too well. I'm gonna try and explain things again so that people don't get mad at me or something. Um, I'm calling this series, you know, whatever I'm calling it, fixing Pokemon and stuff, but in reality what I'm really doing is making Pokemon evolution lines match in terms of their color scheme just to kind of show off what they would look like it's up to you whether or not you think it looks better some of them i personally think look better but you don't have to agree and that kind of stuff this is just kind of like a little visual experiment of sorts just to show these things off and what they would look like I'm mainly just calling it fixing Pokemon and using all that kind of wording just because it sounds better than, you know, saying something complicated like what I just said. And I've said that every time, and I'm just trying to clear things up. I'm trying to uh, propose this as a cool and interesting thing, not something to make people mad or spark controversy. So anyway, this is the Sinnoh region. And one more thing I want to point out. The last video, I tried naming it something new just to see if things would go differently, and I guess the algorithm didn't like that, because that video didn't do as good as the first two, so I'm just gonna have to stick with the naming convention of Pokemon, but they actually make sense, whether it makes sense to name the videos that or not, because unfortunately I'm kind of stuck with that now, because apparently if I don't call them that, the algorithm's gonna hate me, so yeah. Anyway, we're starting with Turtwig line, and as of the last video, instead of just simply making the final evolutions of the line have the pre-evolutions colors, I'm also doing vice versa and giving the first evolutions the final evolutions colors. So here you can see Turtwig with Torterra's colors, and for the most part it honestly looks pretty good. The eye is arguably a little weird, but that is what Torterra's eye looks like. It has red in it. Grottle with Turtwig's colors really doesn't change much, honestly. I gave it a black stripe because Turtwigs has one going through its shell, while Grottle doesn't. But it's nothing too really noteworthy. And then Torterra with Turtwigs colors. Uh, don't mind the fact that it has a white outline. That was my bad. I kind of messed up in Photoshop by trying to get rid of the background, which was black for some reason, even though it was a transparent image. So let's pretend that didn't happen. Uh, overall, it's not too bad, though. I took a little artistic creativity with it and designed his face to have that brown mixed in with it because that brown on Turtwig is usually just where the the stem on his head is, but I took the liberty of making that his upper jaw to make it look sort of unique. Then of Empoleon and Piplup, I skipped out on Primplup because nothing really changed. Piplup honestly looks a little more like royal. I Again, here I took a little bit of liberty, artistic liberty, and I made that little spiky symbol on its head, since it kind of looks like a crown, I don't know if that's intentional, and it's normal design, that's not really colored that way, but I took the crown or trident shape of Empoleon and made it that color on Piplup, so that it carries over that king or emperor-like aspect, and then also just like the darker color scheme, it looks more, uh, powerful, I guess you could say, and then Empoleon with Piplup's colors, that's pretty much just its shiny, so nothing too special to note. Then we've got Motham. I skipped out on Wormadam because, you know, it's literally just Burmy, but bigger for the most part. And the colors don't change. But this, honestly, this is maybe my favorite thing I've done yet because it shows what Motham would look like if it carried the same trope as Burmy and Wormadams, as in having unique typings and unique cloaks. So the one on the left would be a Motham Sandy cloak, which I guess would be a bug ground type as well. Then you've got the the Motham Leaf Cloak, and then the Motham Trash Cloak. And I honestly think these all look really good. Uh, arguably better than regular Motham. Maybe not the dusty one or the sand one, whatever you call it, just because it's kind of pale. But, like, the pink and the green on the other two, they look pretty good of Motham. Then we've got Kranidos and Rampardos. This doesn't really change much. The main difference is just the, uh, the brightness slash darkness of their skin and Cranidos getting a red eye while Rampardos gets a white eye. Honestly, I prefer the white eye on Rampardos and also the white eye on Cranidos, which brings me back to what the real purpose of this video is. 
it's to say, okay, would this evolution line look better if it shared the final evolution's colors or the pre-evolution's colors? So in this case, in my opinion, if it was all cranidos colors, it would look better. Anyway, moving on, uh, I guess I skipped out on the Chimchar line somehow, but here's Chimchar. With Infernape's colors, it looks like this. Um, it kind of has like that, I don't know what you call it, but like a, a white powdered face, like a 1700s looking thing. It's not too bad, honestly, but at the same time, it doesn't really change too much. Monferno also doesn't really change much. The main difference is the crest over the eyes is red instead of blue, which is pretty cool. And Infernape, not much changes either. Just again, the blue changes to red, which I honestly think looks pretty cool. Also, the blue skin and fingers that it has for some reason, they're now like more tannish, like Chimchar's skin is, or I don't, I guess you would call that skin. Whatever it is, I think it still looks pretty cool. I can't really say if I like regular Infernape better or not, but this is still decent. Then we've got Cherim and Cherubi. Cherubi honestly looks pretty cool, even though I guess here it doesn't really make sense because it's a cherry and it's supposed to be red, but at the same time, this kind of makes it look like a golden or enchanted fruit of sorts. And then Cherim now kind of looks like a strawberry, which is pretty cool, because I mean, Pokemon evolutions don't always make sense, so a cherry turning into a strawberry would be interesting. Anyway, then we've got Shellos and Gastrodon. I did the, uh, I think this is the West Sea form. I did both of the forms individually. So this would be Shellos in whatever form it is with that Gastrodon's colors and vice versa. This Gastrodon honestly looks pretty cool with the white stomach. I think normally it's, I mean, it, normally it's pink because I'm literally looking at Shellos with what the colors would be. The Shellos is pretty decent. Normally it would be pink on the top instead of brown. So it honestly looks pretty good. And then we've got to the other ones. This one, the change isn't as noticeable or as special, really. But, you know, since it's pretty much the same, you can't really complain about it. Then we've got the Gibble line. Gibble with Garchomp's darker colors honestly looks pretty cool. Gabite, nothing really changes. It's just a little brighter, which I think is kind of just it's shiny. However, I did take Gibble's eye color scheme with how it has black and then white in the center as opposed to white and then black in the center of the other two. So now they have more like creepy or evil looking eyes and the same goes for Garchomp, which, you know, also looks pretty good. At least if that was the shiny, it would still be a pretty bad shiny, but it would be better than the regular Garchomp shiny, which literally doesn't change at all. However, I do like the black eyes on them. Then we've got Bronzong and Bronzor. Bronzor is a little weird with Bronzong's red eyes, but I do think Bronzong itself with Bronzor's colors and the yellow eyes honestly looks pretty cool. It looks a lot more shiny-like, and I don't mean shiny as in a shiny Pokemon, I mean shiny as in, like, metallic. Anyway, then we've got Hippowdon and Hippopotas. Uh, you know, there's two different gender variants, so I have them split off in the middle here. You've got the one Hippopotas, which is now all dark and gray, like the one Hippowdon is, which honestly looks pretty cool, especially with the white eyes instead of, or the red eyes instead of white eyes. And the other Hippopotas honestly looks pretty cool as well. I guess anything's kind of better than that dull brown camo it usually has. And then the Hippopot, or Hippopowdons with their colors also look pretty decent, honestly. I kind of like the one on the left more, but, you know... I actually don't know what to say. Moving on, anyway, we've got Squirpy and Drapion. Squirpy is kind of like it's shiny, like slightly more red as opposed to purple, and also has white eyes because that's what Drapion has. And then Drapion, it's a lot more blue, which honestly, this kind of calls to mind something from a video I made a while ago where I changed the colors of Pokemon to completely change the rest of their design. And in that video, I took Drapion and by simply making it blue, I changed it into, like, a sea scorpion type of thing. And that kind of looks like this. So anyway, I mean, that that still looks pretty cool. Moving on, though, this is the last one, because a lot of Sinnoh Pokemon are just, like, cross-gen Evos, so I've already covered them in previous videos. And also, just a lot of Sinnoh Pokemon have similar color schemes to their evolutions, so a lot was cut out here. 
But don't worry, Unova's gonna be pretty long. That'll probably be the biggest one, honestly. But for now, this is the last one. We've got Snover and Obama Snow. Snover looks a little weird, but at the same time, I guess that could kind of make sense, because now instead of looking like a snowy tree, it looks like a snowy pine cone. And then I guess as a snowy pine cone, it would then sprout and grow into the snowy tree that Obama Snow is. Anyway, aside from that, Obama Snow of Snover's colors, the main difference is that its feet now get like the root or like bark colors, which honestly makes more sense because it loses those colors that Snover has and they're both supposed to be partially inspired by a snowy tree, so it makes sense to have those colors in its feet. And then also it gives it greenish eyes instead of the white eyes, which I honestly think looks pretty cool. It looks a little more menacing. But anyway, that's uh, all for now. Hopefully the algorithm doesn't get mad again. I'll, I'm not going to change the title of this video this time, so yeah. But anyway, if you liked this or just watched it or something, uh, thanks for watching. And consider liking and commenting and subscribing and all that. And thanks for watching. I, I've been saying that twice a lot now, but oops.